Hello sa lahat. Ngayon ang sex na meeting natin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Na book club. Which is about sa book ni William Lane Craig ng title ay On Guard. Ngayon I will talk about yung six chapter ng title ay Can We Be Good Without God? So normally, when we have our book club as the host, I lead the flow ng discussion. Nang ginagawa namin is nag-mention ako ng certain points na diniscuss ni Dr. Craig. And as we go along, uh, mag-ask ako ng specific questions sa kanila about the book for open discussion. And ang intention talaga is to make sure that everyone understands yung content ng book para ma-process and ma-defend yung mga ideas talaga na provided there. Dahil this is merely a recap video, hindi ko isasama yung mga answers nila. But I will just give my personal answers mga questions na yun when it was asked. So let's start sa ating discussion about the sixth chapter ng book. Dr. Craig starts the book by saying na surely may mga tao na magagalit when we ask the question, can we be good without God? It seems to imply kasi na if a person does not believe in God, then they are morally bankrupt people. And may good reasons sa mga tao if they get offended. Kasi we know na in reality ay minsan ang buhay ng mga hindi nagbelieve kay God puts us to shame dahil mas maayos sila mamuhay compared sa atin who profess to believe. Though ang question is not can we be good without believing in God. Ang belief ay nag-refer sa confidence natin if ang bagay ay true. And when we discuss about confidence at truthfulness ng isang bagay, ay nag-refer tayo sa epistemology, which is a study about knowledge and about justified or warranted belief. Ang question ay rather, can we be good without God? Obviously, ito ay hindi nag-refer sa epistemology but about ontology, which is a study about sa nature ng reality. If si God ay hindi nag-exist, pwede ba na maging truly good ang isang tao? Ano ba ang nature ng moral values? Is this subjective or objective? And ano ang ground nito which makes it subjective or objective? Sa book ay Dr. Craig introduces us kay William Sorley which is yung makikita niyo sa picture na guy. So, siya ay professor of moral philosophy sa Cambridge University. And sa moral values and the idea of God, ay nag-argue si Sorley ng best hope para sa isang rational at unified na view ng reality ay for us to postulate na si God ang ground of both the natural and moral orders. Sorley maintains down na may objective moral order at ito ay as really independent of us in the same way na ang external na natural world ay nag-exist. Sorley recognizes na in one sense ay hindi natin kaya i-prove ang existence ng objective moral values. Pero he points out na in the same way ay hindi natin kaya i-prove ang existence ng external natural world. Dr. Craig mentions na pwede kasi na nasa matrix lang pala tayo and ang na-experience talaga natin is ang virtual reality. Hence, ang moral order at natural order ay on similar footing. And in the same way na we assume ang reality ng external world with our sense experience, ay we assume the moral order with our moral experience. Sa Vini Sorley, ay ang parehong natural at moral order ay part ng reality. Ang question ay kung ano ba ang worldview na kaya i-combine ang dalawa coherently. And ang argument ni Sorley is that ang best explanation ay the God. Dapat daw ay may infinite eternal mind na architect ng nature at ang moral purpose niya ay gradually fulfilled ng man and universe. Now, ang question ay, how do you respond to the idea that the objective moral order is just as real as the objective physical world? Why? Answer. I agree with the statement. I remember a video na nag-ask kung ang moral beliefs ba natin ay properly basic. In context, sabi ni Dr. Craig ay ang beliefs na properly basic ay hindi infer from more basic or foundational beliefs. Sila ay formed in the context of certain experiences and hindi sila inferentially grasped as true. And ang pinaka-common na properly basic beliefs ay ang belief na may physical objects around us and wala na way to prove inferentially na hindi tayo brain in a vat na may chemical na may chemicals na wired up in electrodes ng isang mad scientist na in-stimulate pala niya by electrodes ang brain natin to make us think na experience natin ang real world ng physical objects. And sa absence ng isang defeater, 
tayo ay perfectly rational to believe ng experience natin tells us na ang experience natin about physical objects ay totoo at na experience natin iso through sensory beliefs. Ang tul- and tulad ng sabi ni Dr. Craig, in the same way na ang sensory beliefs natin ay properly basic at grounded ito sa ating sensory experience. So ang belief natin about sa objective moral values and duties ay grounded in moral experience. And if walang defeater dito, then walang reason for us to think na morally indifferent to torture a little girl for fun. It's clear na morally wrong ito kahit ang isang tao na psychopath would disagree. Now na we are able to finish the introduction, let us now proceed some moral argument. So ang syllogism for this ay, premise one, if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Premise two, objective moral values and duties do exist. Conclusion, therefore, God exists. Ang argument na ito ay ginagamit ang rule of inference na modus tollens. Ito rin ay kilala bilang denying the consequent. Ang consequent ay yung sumunod na variable sa isang logical sequence. Ito yung typically represented ng letter na Q. Dito, ang consequent ay ang objective moral values and duties ay hindi nag-exist. Denied siya sa premise 2 dahil ang affirmed ay opposite sa Q. So ito ay not Q. And if this is the case, then logically ang conclusion will become not P or that God exists. Obviously, a logically valid ang argument dahil dito. Aside from this, Dr. Craig also mentions na powerful ang argument sa parehong premises. Sa isang pluralistic na age kasi, ay takot ang mga tao usually to impose their own values sa iba. And hence, ang premise 1 seems correct sa kanila dahil sa implicit na relativism nito. Also, dahil sa deeply held na values din ng mga tao, they also think na objectively wrong for us to impose ang values natin sa iba, which is an affirmation na may objective morality pala. And Dr. Craig shared the story kung saan ay may funny na conversation siya sa isang student. Kaya ito funny is dahil nag-jump ang student back and forth sa dalawang premises. If they talk about premise 1, he will agree and deny the second premise. And when they move sa second premise, mag-agree siya doon at he will deny the first and back and forth, ito nangyari na the student was not able to make up his mind. Though it seems funny, Dr. Craig confessed na heart-wrenching then to see how a person does, does their best to avoid God. Nevertheless, ang pag-focus ni Dr. Craig to talk about sa isang premise when a person objects ay isang good na way ng pag-dialogue with unbelievers para we can really test them when they make objections. Before we proceed sa discussion natin sa mismong premises, let's answer muna yung question na ito. Have you ever had a conversation with someone who said that there are no objective moral values that apply to everyone? If so, how did that person deal with values like tolerance and love? Answer. May mga na-encounter na ako ng mga students around the university who believe na subjective ang moral values and duties. They see it merely as a personal thing or based ito sa napag-usapan ng group of people which resulted sa view ng morality sa society. Regarding tolerance and love, they seem to appeal sa empathy natin sa ibang tao, like about being mindful, sa nararanasan din ng ibang mga nagsuffer in order for us to be tolerant and loving. May isa akong naalalang student sa library and information science na nagsabi rin sa akin na she does not see na, na ang paggawa ng good dahil sa reward ni God ay a good thing. Kasi you are just doing ang isang bagay para makakuha ng reward. At least in general, sa mga nakausap ko na objective ang morality, they seem to get stumped or hindi sila sure how to answer when I ask them kung kaninong morality ang dapat maging superior if nag-contradict yung morality ng bawat isa. Uh, dahil tapos na tayo sa syllogism, proceed na tayo sa premise one, which is if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Before we proceed sa defense ng premise one, ay important for us to define our terms. Ang questions na we need to answer ay una, what is the difference between values and duties? And two, what is the difference between subjective and objective? Answer. One, uh, sa values and duties, Dr. Craig defines ang values as having to do with whether ang isang bagay ay good or bad. Tapos ang duties naman ay nag-refer sa moral obligation, which is what we ought or ought not to do. This may seem to be a definition na walang difference kasi di ba parang ang good at right ay same naman. Pero we can see sa example ni Dr. Craig na magkaiba sila. Regarding sa values or sa good, we know na it's good for us to be a doctor or a farmer or a diplomat. 
Pero hindi natin pwede mag- magawa lahat yun. And hindi naman tayo morally obligated to be a doctor or a farmer or a diplomat. Dahil di kaobligado, uh, dahil good naman ang choices, you can even choose a vocation na wala sa mga nabanggit. Like to be a lawyer or a scientist. So ito ang value which refers sa good or bad or sa worst ng isang bagay. Ang duty naman ay nag-refer sa right or wrong. Kung saan ay obligado tayo to do something at all times. So ang example nito is obligated tayo na hindi pumatay or na magnako. So number two naman sa subjective at objective. Ang subjective ay dependent sa opinion ng tao. Like ang flavor ng ice cream na mas masarap. Sa akin mas gusto ko yung chocolate. Sa iba baka mas preferred nila ang vanilla. Ang objective naman ay hindi dependent sa opinion ng tao. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay that tama or mali ang isang bagay regardless ng opinion ng tao about it. Ang example na given ni Dr. Craig dito is that kahit ang mga Nazis ang nanalo sa World War II and kahit mag-succeed sila na ma-brainwash nila ang buong mundo ay objectively wrong pa rin ang Holocaust. So uh, ngayon, we will move sa defense ng premise 1. So ang question... Uh, ano ang argument ni Dr. Craig to justify na ang objective na moral values and duties ay require si God? Answer. Sa moral values, Dr. Craig says na ang moral values ay traditionally based kay God as our highest good. But if si God ay hindi nag-exist, then it begs the question kung ano ba ang dapat na basis ng ating moral values. Bakit ba natin need isipin ang human beings ay may moral worth? Ang most popular na form daw ng atheism ay ang naturalism which holds ng mga bagay lang na nag-exist ay mga bagay na we can describe sa scientific series. Pero ang science ay morally neutral at hindi raw natin makikita ang moral values sa isang test tube. It then follows ng moral values ay hindi talaga nag-exist at sila raw ay merely illusions ng human beings. Kahit mag-go pa raw beyond sa bounds ng science ang atheist, ay given their worldview ay magbeg ito ng question kung ano ba ang basis natin for saying na valuable ang human life. Sa naturalistic view kasi, ay ang moral values daw natin ay merely byproducts ng biological evolution at social conditioning. In the same way na ang mga baboons ay nag-exhibit ng cooperative and self-sacrificial behavior dahil ang natural selection ay dinetermine na advantageous ito sa struggle nila for survival. Dahil dito, ang primate na cousins daw nila, which is ang homo sapiens, ay nag-exhibit ng similar na behavior for the same reason. So dahil sa sociobiological na pressures, ay nag-evolve ang herd morality na ito sa homo sapiens, which functions sa perpetuation ng kanilang species. Nevertheless, Dr. Craig argues na dahil sa atheistic view, ang herd morality does not seem to be objectively true. Dahil we can see na ibang history ng human evolution ay rewinded, then we can arrive at a different na set ng moral values na pwede mag-evolve. Ang substantiation ni Craig dito ay ang quote ni Darwin from The Descent of Man. Quote, uh, if men were reared under precisely the same condition as hive, be- hive bees, there can hardly be a doubt that our unmarried females would, like the worker bees, think it is a sacred duty to kill their brothers and mothers would strive to kill their fertile daughters and no one would think of interfering and go. So dahil pwede ito mangyari sa isang naturalistic na world, then hindi natin pwede ipilit ang herd morality kasi if we do, then we commit speciesism, which is an unjustified na bias sa sarili nating species. Ang mangyayari daw is that at the end of the day, if wala si God, then ape-like creatures lang tayo on a speck of solar dust na may delusions of grandeur. Sa moral duties naman, traditionally ay nagspring ito from God's commands, such as ang Ten Commandments. Pero if walang God, then anong basis for objective moral duties? Sa atheistic worldview kasi ay ang human beings are just animals, and ang mga animals ay walang moral obligations to each other. Kapag pinatay ng isang layo ng isang zebra, we know na it kills the zebra, but it does not murder the zebra. Ganon din sa great white sharks. When it forcibly copulates with a female shark, ay it forcibly copulates with her, but it does not rape her. Wala raw moral dimension sa mga actions na ito. They are neither prohibited nor obligatory. So if si God ay hindi nag-exist, then why do we need to think that we have moral obligations to do anything? Mahirap daw isipin how ang duties would be anything more than subjective na impression na galing sa societal and parental conditioning. 
regarding rape and incest, ang skeptic may argue na ito ay hindi biologically and socially advantageous and dahil dito ay naging tabu ito sa human development. For there is no way to show na ang rape and incest is wrong if God does not exist. Kasi ang animals do it all the time naman sa animal kingdom. So if ang isang rapist ay nag-go against herd morality, ang ginagawa niya is merely acting unfashionable compared sa ibang mga members ng herd. Kung wala raw moral law giver, then walang objective moral law na we must obey. Now, before we proceed sa discussion about specific objections sa premise one, let's answer yung question. Uh, try to come up with an atheist argument to defend the idea that forcible copulation is morally wrong for humans but not for sharks. How would you reply? Answer. Ang naalala ko sa question na ito ay ang response ni James Fodder sa remark ni Dr. Craig na sa naturalistic na view, ang human beings are just animals and ang animals ay walang moral obligations towards one another. Kapag a lion daw kills a zebra, kills the zebra but it does not murder the zebra. And sa great white shark naman ay it forcibly copulates with the female shark but it does not rape her. Ang nangyari... And nangyari ito kasi walang moral dimension sa actions daw na ito from a naturalistic perspective. Ang response ni James Fodder is that ang human beings ay unique sa lahat ng animals in the degree na we are able to comprehend ang consequences ng ating actions sa well-being ng ibang mga creatures. Tayo rin daw ay able to rationally deliberate kung paano ba dapat tayo mag-behave and kung ano ba ang nag-constitute ng good life. Dahil dito ay special daw tayo na type of animal and dahil dito ay there is nothing mysterious daw na ang lion ay nag-kill sa zebra and hindi murder. Pero pag ginawa ito ng tao sa kapwa-tao ay murder na siya. Ito rin daw ang reason kung bakit we do not consider criminal pag ang isang bata or mentally disabled na tao would commit actions na would be considered as crimes. Kasi raw wala silang capacity to understand ang consequences ng kanilang actions or to deliberate as rational agents. Thus, hindi sila culpable. As a response, ang argument na ito ni Fodder ay hindi convincing dahil he merely appealed to humans being rational and unique. Pero hindi siya kasi nagbigay ng metaphysical na explanation based from naturalistic assumptions how that would be the case. For sure, si Dr. Craig would not disagree with him about sa uniqueness and rationality of human beings. So he needs to provide more than that fact to establish his argument. In fact, si Dr. Craig ay kinote si Richard Dawkins saying, quote, Richard Dawkins' assessment of human worth may be depressing, but why on atheism is he mistaken when he says, quote, There is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pointless indifference. We are machines for propagating DNA. It is every living object's sole reason for being. End quote. If this is true, then ang seeming uniqueness ng human beings, like in terms ng rationality, does not give an adequate reason to constitute moral duties. Kasi if we talk about human rationality, ay walang explanation na binigay si Fodor how moral duties are constituted by it. In fact, problematic ito kasi ang tanong ay kaninang rationality ang dapat manaig sa rationality ng ibang mga agents. Should we base it sa human IQ? And... If this is the case, then mag-lead ito sa totalitarian reign ng mga matalinong tao over people na less smart. Then paano mag-account ang naturalism for objective rights ng mga tao na less smart or people na hindi considered rational dahil sa kanilang disabilities? Dapat ba sila patayin? So kahit yung argument ni Samaris on human flourishing ay hindi rin makatulong. Ang sabi ni Dr. Craig, Quote, this implies that we can conceive of a possible world in which the continuum of human well-being is not a moral landscape. The peaks of well-being could be occupied by evil people. End quote. And possible ito, indeed. Dahil si Hitler ay ginamit ang flourishing ng Germans as a race para i-justify ang pag-exterminate sa Jews. Then where do we draw the line? Si Fodor hindi na give ng reason and he merely assumed na drawn siya by virtue of the uniqueness of man. Now, tapos na tayo sa pag-explain why we will leave premise one. Let's proceed na sa defense nito against sa specific objections. Let's start sa Eutyphro's dilemma. Ang dilemma na ito ay named after one of the characters ni Plato sa kanyang dialogues. And ang dilemma goes like this. Is something good because God wills it? Or does God will something because it is good? Dito, 
kapag sinabi mo isang bagay ay good dahil will ito ni God, then ang good ay nagiging arbitrary. Kasi pwede na i-will ni God ng hatred ay maging good and pwede tayo maging morally obligated to hate one another, which is crazy. But if we say na si God ay nag-will ng isang bagay dahil ito ay good, then we say na ang good can be identified apart from God. Hence, independent ang good and bad from God. And dahil dito, moral values and duties could be said to exist apart from God, which contradicts ang first premise. Now, yung question, how do we answer ang Eutyphros dilemma? Answer, dito ay hindi natin kailangan to refute and accept ang either na horns ng dilemma. Kaya nga siya dilemma dahil ang either options ay hindi favorable for you. And ito ay nag-commit ng fallacy ng false dichotomy. Meron kasing third alternative which is that God wills something because He is good. Ang ibig sabihin nito is that ang good ay hindi arbitrary at ito ay hindi rin outside of God. But ang mismong nature ni God ang standard ng goodness at ang commandments niya expression ng nature na yun. Ang ibig sabihin nito is that ang moral duties natin ay determined ng commands ng isang just and loving God. So kung tanungin tayo ng isang atheist if si God ay command ng child abuse, magiging obligado ba tayo na gawin yun? Ang answer dito is that ang question niya mismo ay nonsense kasi si God will never command something na nag-contradict sa kanyang nature. Ang morally good or bad ay determined ng nature ni God at ang morally right or wrong ay determined ng will ni God. God will something dahil siya ay good and something is right dahil ito ang will ni God. Atheistic moral Platonism. So dito naman, sabi ni Plato na ang good ay nag-exist lamang on its own bilang isang self-existent na idea. Ang good ay nag-exist on its own. Ang mga atheists could say ng moral values tulad ng justice, mercy, love, ay nag-exist lang on its own without any foundation. Itong reason, kaya siya natawag na atheistic moral Platonism. Question, how do we answer ito? Uh, answer, first, ang atheistic moral Platonism ay hindi intelligible. Mahirap kasi isipin kung anong ibig sabihin na ang moral value ng justice ay hindi nag-exist. Madali kasi for us to think na if ang isang tao ay just, pero pag sinabi natin na ang justice lang itself ay nag-exist, ay mahirap ito isipin. Ang moral values then seems to be properties of persons and mahirap siya isipin in terms of abstractions. Second, ang view ay hindi nag-provide ng basis for moral duties. Kasi for the sake of argument ng moral values to then justice, loyalty, mercy, ay nag-exist, then how does it result na magkaroon ng tao ng moral obligations? Iyang abstractions tulad ng greed, hatred, and selfishness ay nag-exist din on its own in such a view. Pero there is no reason for us to think dapat mas maglin tayo sa isang abstract na object compared sa, is- sa iba. Walang, wala silang power to punish us to, or to, to obligate us to a certain direction. Hence, ang atheistic moral Platonism ay naglak ng moral lawgiver. And dahil doon ay wala siyang grounds for moral obligation. Third, sobrang improbable for a blind evolutionary process to spring forth creatures na nag-correspond sa abstract na realm ng moral values. Sobrang incredible raw ito na coincidence as if ang moral realm knows na paparating ang mga ganito na creatures. Mas plausible pa raw sabi ni Sorley na ang natural at moral realm may under sa authority ni God na nag sa atin ng parehong laws of nature at moral law. Dan to think na ang dalawang independent realms na ito ay nagkataon lang na nag sila with, with each other. Uh, next, humanism. Most of them want to affirm ng objective reality ng moral values and duties ay totoo. And sinasabi nila is that whatever ang nag-contribute sa human flourishing ay good at whatever na nag from it is bad. So yung question, how do we answer yung humanism? So dito naman, Dr. Craig answers na if ang ultimate stopping point natin ay human flourishing, then ito ay premature dahil sa arbitrariness at implausibility nito. Ang reason niya is first, yung arbitrariness ng humanism. Given atheism, then what makes us think na flourishing ng humans ay mas valuable sa flourishing ng ants or mice. Bakit need natin isipin ng pag-inflict ng harm sa ibang member ng species natin ay mali? Ang second naman na reason ay ang implausibility. Ang atheists will argue na ang property ng badness ay necessarily nag-attach sa pagbit ng man sa wife niya. 
ang property ng goodness ay necessarily nag-attach sa mother na nag-nurse ng kanyang infant. Ang sinasabi raw nila is that kapag ang natural properties ay in place na, ang moral properties will necessarily follow. Pero given atheism, what may us think na ang strange na non-natural na moral properties tulad ng goodness and ba- badness ay nag-exist? And if they exist, what makes them necessarily attach with e- each other? Wala raw reason to think that way given uh, atheistic view ng world. And dahil dito, hindi enough ng humanists will say ng human beings ay may interested, intrinsic moral value kasi we already agree with this. Ang question is for them to think of ways to justify kung paano ba magiging morally significant ang human beings if totoong atheism. If wala, then isa lamang stubborn na human face ang humanism. In contrast, si God ay isang natural na stopping point bilang foundation natin sa objective moral values and duties. Si God ang greatest na conceivable being and dahil dito ay hindi sa kanya nag-apply ang charge ng arbitrariness and implausibility na characterized of humanism. So next, uh, ngayon, tapos na tayo sa discussion sa first premise. And before we proceed sa second premise, i-answer muna natin yung question. How would you explain the fact that atheists just know that harming an innocent person, innocent human being is wrong and can give live good lives without believing that God is the ultimate source of values and duties? Answer. The short answer dito ay hindi natin kiniklaim that a person needs to believe in God para lang malaman nila na mali to harm an innocent human being. Hindi rin natin kiniklaim na need nila to believe in God to live more lives. Ang need kasi to believe in God to be good is an epistemological claim na Christians are not making. Mali kasi ito dahil kahit ang mga atheists ay alam na mali to harm an innocent human being. And minsan, they can live good lives that put Christians to shame. When, we, when they say na objectively na mali to harm an innocent human being, we can agree with them. Kasi pwede naman na hindi magkaibang reason how a human being knows that something is morally right or wrong. Ang claim kasi talaga is that hindi pwede maging good ang tao if God does not exist. And this is an ontological claim. Pag si God kasi hindi nag-exist, mag-lead ito sa moral nihilism. Ang morality ay magiging illusion. We can then just live with however we want to live with our life. So, next sa uh, premise 2. So, premise 2 is objective moral values and duties do exist. When Dr. Craig opened this section, he mentions na akala niya na ito ang magiging pinaka-controversial niya na premise. However, ang na-observe niya is that sa surveys na taken sa universities, ay contrary sa impression, ang mga professors ay more apt to believe sa objective moral values compared sa students. And ang mga philosophy professors ay more apt to believe in objective moral values compared sa professors in general. In view of this, let's, let's answer ang question. What do you make of the fact that professors are, are more apt to believe in objective moral values than students? And that philosophy professors are more apt to believe in objective moral values than professors in general? What might this say about these three groups of people? How might age be a factor, education, popular culture? Answer. Ang opinion ko on this matter is that ang age may be a factor kasi ang student may not have thought so much about the question dahil preoccupied pa siya in thinking about other things na iniisip normally ng isang student such as in games, love life, barkada. Now, hindi ko naman lina lahat na ganito yung mga students kasi may mga students na kahit bata pa sila, they think deeply about the questions of existence. And that I have personally met many of them. Ang popular culture could also influence yung mga bata na ito kasi it's possible na dito nila nakuha yung mga notions ng meaning of life is not something that we discover but something na we create. Sa education, ang moral nihilism could be something na tinuwi sa students ng mga professors. And baka ill-equipped sila to push back against it. And it's possible na they merely borrowed yung conviction ng kanilang professor. Though may mga professors naman against sa view na ito, and based sa assumption ng question ay more philosophy professors believe in objective moral values. I think ang philosophy as a discipline helps na mas maging hair-like ang precision 
in thinking about the nature of morality and experience. And I think this helps them see na mas sound talaga to believe in objective moral values compared to alternatives. Uh, yung question, how does Dr. Craig justify premise too? Answer. Going back sa pag-explain why Dr. Craig believes in premise too, he talks about moral experience. Ang mga philosophers daw trust their moral experience in the same way na they trust their senses. Uh, kahit hindi ro infallible ang senses natin, it does not make us think na walang external world na nag-exist. And in the same way, kung walang good reason for us to distrust ang moral experience natin, then it seems reasonable to accept na some things are objectively good or evil or right and wrong. Ang example na binigay ni Dr. Craig sa pag-make ng point niya sa premise 2 is that ang mga tao ay nag-give lamang ng lip service sa relativism. 95% daw of them can be very quickly convinced na ang objective moral values ay after all nag-exist. Ang gagawin mo lang daw is to produce a few illustrations. Ang mga example na binigay ni Dr. Craig ay ang Hindu practice na sati kung saan ay ang widows ay burned alive sa funeral pyres ng kanilang husbands ang pag ng Chinese women for life sa pagbind ng feet nila from childhood para mag-resemble ito sa mga lotus blossoms. If you ask people if right ba for Catholic priests to sexually abuse little boys and if okay ba for the church to cover it up, then you will see na may indignation sa mga tao na reasonable which presupposes na objective moral values and duties exist. Next, yung sociobiological evolution. So dito papasok na yung objections of premise 2 na may good reasons tayo to distrust ang ating moral experience. They claim na ang sociobiological na account sa origins ng morality ay nag-undermine ang ating moral experience. Ito ay dahil ang moral beliefs daw natin ay ingrained sa ating evolution and social conditioning. So ang question, how do we answer sociobiological evolution? Answer. Ayon kay Dr. Craig, ang sociobiological account ay walang nagagawa to undermine ang truths ng moral beliefs. Ang moral beliefs daw kasi independent of how we came to hold that belief. So pwede natin makuha ang moral beliefs natin through a fortune cookie. They could still happen to be true. And if God exists, then ang objective moral values and duties ay nag-exist regardless of how we came to learn about them. Ang sociobiological account daw ay at best nag-prove ng perception ng ating moral values and duties ay nag-evolve. But if ang moral values ay gradually na-discover and hindi invented, then ang gradual and fallible na perception natin ng values na yun ay hindi nag-undermine ang objective reality. In the same way na ang gradual and fallible na perception natin ng physical world ay hindi nag-undermine ang objective reality. Pero baka ang sociobiological account ay hindi nag-undermine ang truth ng ating moral beliefs, but ang justification natin for holding such beliefs. If ang moral beliefs kasi natin ay based sa fortune cookies, then accidentally it turned out to be true. Then wala tayong justification to think na true ang moral beliefs natin. In the same way, if ang moral beliefs natin ay shaped ng evolution, then we cannot have confidence in them dahil ang evolution ay hindi nag-aim sa truth but sa survival. Pero if ang moral beliefs natin ay selected for their survival value and hindi dahil sa truth, then we cannot trust our moral experience and therefore we cannot know if premise to is true. May dalawang problems dito. First, if atheism is true, then ang moral beliefs natin ay selected ng evolution solely for their survival value and hindi for their truth. And if God does not exist, then ang social biological account is true. The, and yung moral beliefs natin ay illusory. Pero ito ay hindi reason to think ng social biological account ay true. If God exists, then it's likely na He would want us to have fundamentally correct na moral beliefs and so he will guide the evolutionary process to produce ang mga gano'n na beliefs and instill ang mga ito sa tao. Apart from sa assumption ng atheism, wala tayong reason to deny kung ano ang sinasabi ng ating moral experience. Second, ang objection ay self-defeating. Given na true ang naturalism, lahat ng beliefs natin, hindi lang ang moral beliefs ang result ng evolution and social conditioning. Thus, if ang evolutionary account ay nag sa skepticism ng knowledge in general, then self-defeating siya dahil dapat maging skeptical din tayo ng evolutionary account itself dahil ito ay product lang din ng evolution and social conditioning. Ang objection then undermines itself, so given ang warrant provided ng premise to by our moral experience, I justified tayo in thinking ng objective moral values and duties ay nag-exist. Conclusion 
Now that we are able to defend the two premises, premises, then it follows that si God is not exist. The moral argument is a complement to cosmological and to design arguments that they tell us about the moral nature of the Creator of the universe. It is what gives us the personal, necessarily existing being that is not just perfectly good, but that its nature, its standard of goodness, and its commands are what constitute moral duties.